Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And I hope all of you in America had a happy Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, we're back. We're back and ready for more. We're back and we're ready to talk about Masters of the Universe Revelation. Again. Again. Because uh, it is the gift that keeps on giving, even though we thought the show was absolutely abysmal. Mm -hmm. uh, except for the animation. The animation was good. Well, no, I mean, I won't. Okay, you know what? To be fair, I have, I have liked the second half better than the first half for the simple reason that I am so amused by how stupid it was. I will randomly start laughing. I know you've been randomly laughing for no reason. Oh, it's, it's so ridiculous. It's just like ridiculous. you think about like her parents trying to eat her or, you know, like how she was got the power from Skeletor and you just start laughing all over again because I am vastly entertained, but not in the way they wanted me to be. If you told me 10 years ago that they were going to do a He-Man reboot, mm -hmm. right? Or a, a, a pseudo sequel, right? That's basically, I guess it's a pseudo sequel. And they were going to do that. And these were some of the plot points. I would have busted a gut. I'm like, there's no way in hell that they would ever, that Mattel would ever agree to that. Mm -hmm. And by God, here we are. It's 2021. Yes. And, and uh, they did it. Batman and Robin levels of cringe in and, the show. And it's know, like, holy shit. It was a show they definitely should have released in one chunk and not yeah. have done two chunks. But even then, um, I think it would have helped a little bit. But it was there were so, so many things in there that were just, what the hell? I don't think it would have done much better. <sighs> but it does seem like the ending was a little different. I think it, I mean, I don't know that for sure. We have no confirmation. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, it's one thing we, we talked about in our review. It, it feels like they were setting Andra up to be much more important than she actually wound up being. And uh, by the second part of the show, she was just kind of an afterthought. Yeah. Like she was barely in it. Yeah. Which I thought was weird given how much screen time she'd been given. Well, I thought it was funny too. Like she wanted a family, right? And so he's like, okay, I'll make you a lieutenant in my, in my army. And at the end, they're talking about, you know, family, but basically she's still the hired help. I just thought that was Shh, funny. I, I, yeah, I, whatever. I mean, whatever. The show's a bust for us. Uh, your, your mileage may vary. Um, I thought this was funny because, uh, uh, you know, our, our, our Kane's actually getting quite a lot of good buzz. It was mm -hmm. very popular. And it basically does everything right that Masters of the Universe Revelation does wrong. Now, it's interesting because there's damage control being done. Not that anybody really cares. I mean, you go out to Rotten Tomatoes and there's only like, what? Seven. Seven reviews for part two? They're like, oh my God, it's 98%. Seven. Seven. Critical reviews. Seven. And none of them, uh, save for like two from what I would consider to be like a major media outlet. We got Polygon, we have IGN. And that's like, yeah. that's it, right? Um, so... The media now is comparing it to The Last Jedi, which I think is very appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, we even said that with part one. It was the deconstruction of He-Man and, uh, you know, him passing passing the uh, the mantle uh, unwillingly to a female lead. However, the way the media is spinning it is, you know, well, it's like it in the, in the good ways. Because don't you know, finally, Tila got the attention she deserved, even though she was always the main character. And if you watch 2002, they did Tila better, and she was still the main, one of the main characters. I mean... Lots of people have done Tila better I know. than Kevin Smith. <laughs> but I'm just um, like, it just blows my mind that, that Ronaldo, okay, Ronaldo, we gave him credit the other day, but I here, we're, credit we're back day, yeah. here with Ronaldo again. This is just, this is bait. This is bait is what this is. I, I'm going to be honest. I'm not holding it against him in particular. I, I have seen how CBR generates its headlines mm -hmm. and I think they use a tool. Um, I'm not kidding. This is 100% 100 serious. It's like BuzzFeed. There's tools at CBR? <laughs> there are lots of them apparently. Uh, no, they use a tool to actually come up with topics to write about. So what's trending? Oh, Masters of the Universe. What else is trending? Oh, The Last Jedi. Those so, two things you yeah. put them together. Boom. Here's a headline. Go write a story yeah. about yep. it because it's going to get us a lot of clicks and a yep. lot of money. It's big. We're taking the bait so you don't have to. Um, there's that. And then the other thing that we're seeing a lot of, which we're going to get to, too, is, well, gosh darn it, poor Kevin Smith, the toxic fans bullying him. Poor Kevin Smith. Um, poor Kevin Smith being bullied by the toxic fans. And it's funny because, now, I will give him credit. Uh, and what I saw of this, of this article, he didn't actually throw people under the bus, the, but the interviewer keeps trying to throw people under the bus. And it's like, when you want to talk about, I love it. So Kevin Smith made a career on calling out fandoms and stuff like that, like, as a fan, calling out Star Wars and things like that. When he does it, it's just, you know, uh, on the up and up, it's for the fans. But, you know, when we do it, we're toxic people. 
he was high. That's the only explanation I had. Having watched part two, Kevin Smith in the whole writer's room, they were fucking high. That's well, the only meant, explanation. I thought you meant when he called out Star Wars. Because, I mean, oh, I no. call this shit all the time and I'm not high. He was he was uh, praising Disney's sequel trilogy. Oh, yeah, well. He which had was been high. worse than the prequels. But, again, I think he was high or they were paying him or something. Ke- Kevin Smith has changed ever since he moved to La La Land. Mm-hmm. He's not the same person he used to be. Um, but that you happens. Wanna, you want to keep your gigs. You, you, you got to play right? by the rules. Right? So anyway, let's go back to, let's start, where do you want to start with this? We'll start here, but before we get into it any further, okay. please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys, over 242,000 subs. Woo! Thank you for the support. We do talk about pop culture, talk about animation, talk about 1980s stuff. Yep. Talk about the desecrated corpses of our childhood uh, favorite childhood properties being dragged around, paraded around by celebrities in Hollywood and the media. The creatively bankrupt Hollywood like, that they have to keep bringing this stuff up and just ruining it. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad for today's kids because they're just getting leftovers. They're getting hand yeah, I kind of feel da- bad for today's actors and stuff, too, because they're, they're taking a job, you know? Yeah. I mean, the animators, I feel bad that it's their job to animate it, and they did, they did a great job. No one is ever you know, questioning that. But yeah. what they had to work with was shit. I mean, they had a great uh, climactic battle. Uh, well, <laughs> that was the climax. That got. was the climax. <laughs> Unfortunately, it should have been. It should have been He-Man versus Skeletor, not as as side characters having like a side battle. But they should have been the main. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they should have been having this massive, massive battle in the sky or whatever. And that's not what happened. It, it, it was the Teal and Evil Lynn show. You know, it's really interesting too. And again, there was I had some huge questions about this. Uh, my biggest question is where the where the hell was Zodak mm-hmm. during all of this? Because literally, Zodak's sole job in Masters of the Universe is to show up whenever the cosmos is in danger mm-hmm. of being unbalanced. Shows up in his magic chair and he lays down the law. Zodak was nowhere to be found, nope. and nope. and we're talking like. The, the literal end of the universe, and there's no Zodak. Yeah. So I don't know if his chair ran out of gas or they just missed that episode because he was only in a couple episodes of the show. But if they really wanted to put Easter eggs in there and they really were paying attention to Master's lore, Zodak would absolutely be involved. Mm-hmm. If anything, he would have actually been physically involved in this because his job is to make sure the universe doesn't go boom. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and also, Tila, when she's a sorceress... She doesn't look like a bird. No. You know. Um, her mom does. Her mom's a bird. She looks like a snake. That literally, she was sold literally as the goddess, as the sorceress uh, before the filmation mm-hmm. cartoon. And she looked, she had snake armor. Right. And now they we, made it look like a bird. Yeah. And they had uh, Zoar and they had the the snake at the beginning. Right. And I kept thinking, well, they're going to give her the snake armor. Right. Because they're bringing no, the no. snake into it. Nope. Nope. You know, um, but just because the, the plebs won't, won't know that sorceress, we don't make it exactly the same. Again, like, who is this for? I thought she was, maybe that's why she can leave the castle. I'm a snake, not a bird. But no, no, she's a bird. <laughs> so, but she anyway. suddenly can leave the castle. Anyway. Let's, let's go on. So you read, you read this article. I, I know I skimmed through it. You I skimmed was like, through. it's oh, bait. Did. It's bait. It's bait. And so I, I just was like, oh, roll my eyes. Because I, well, I got I got down here. Okay, they're talking about when Masters of the Universe Revelation Part 1 played out, many were vocal over Tila's new role in the franchise. No, Tila always had a big role. Uh, she wasn't just He-Man's sidekick. She wasn't in the original. She never was. She wasn't in the 2002 version either. Several, several episodes. She actually, I would say her backstory was explored more in depth than any other character in that show. Mm-hmm. So. Instead of instead of taking the lead as liberator, trying to bring back magic to save Eternia after Prince Adam was killed by Skeletor. When yeah, okay, yeah, she was trying to bring the magic back. And she complained about magic, and she complained about Adam, and she complained about everyone the whole damn time. They made her the biggest one of the biggest disservices. You can you guys keep going about whether well, they're mad about He-Man. One of the things people were mad about with the show was they ruined Tila. Yeah. They made her an unlikable bitch. I'm sorry, but they did. And that wasn't how Tila was. So in that regard, they they did kind of pull a, a Last Jedi because we had a lot of unlikable bitches. And yes, in the, the Last, Last Jedi. Jedi. Yes. So yes. you're you're wrong there. Um, now as part two unfolds, we see how our journey in the series, as well as He-Man's return, share a surprising theme with Star Wars: The Last Jedi. <laughs> this is so bait. This is all. This is is bait. Get um, angry. 
This is regarding the, the democratization of power, how it's meant for everyone, because they do mention the show, we have the power. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Wasn't she born to be the sorceress? She was. Wasn't she born to be the sorceress? So it is it is her her birthright. It is destiny. To have the magic and and you know, not everybody else has the magic, just just her. Right. And and she's more powerful than other people when's fighting and stuff like that too, I had to point out. You know, so but shouldn't everybody be equal? Including um, Skeletor. He man freaking powers up Skeletor and he thought that wasn't gonna go badly. I know that was dumb. The force was shared was, was to be shared with everyone, cutting themselves off from love was actually wrong. And this gift should have been seeded throughout Whoa. the cosmos. <laughs> well, Skeletor tried to seed evil in, but I think he's shooting blanks. I think he's a little dry down there. So they go it's like in this dust. in this cartoon, this copy. <laughs> Happens firstly with Adam as he steals the sword of power back from Skeletor so they can fight Evil Lynn in her goddess mode. God, is that what we're calling it? Evil Lynn? Yeah, yeah Evil Lynn. Goddess, goddess mode. mode. He shares the power, though, letting Skeletor and Cringer have it. You know, here's something funny. How, um, you know, we're going to use goddess mode for Evil Lynn. What, what, she was a god, right? Why you have, you, you, there you go, have to make it pronoun. She's ready to live outside the castle, something others couldn't do. How did they ever explain how she could? She basically no. just said, I'm gonna I'm gonna live outside the castle. I'm like, well, if it was that fucking easy. Well no, because she doesn't cut off her loved ones. She 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 holds on to them. Just like Ray. Oh, for fuck's sake. I know. I'm just like, this is just, you know. I it, this is bait. That's all this is, is bait. Um Yeah. It's, just, it's about it's, it's like the, it's, it's like the last Jedi because everyone has the power. No, it's like the last Jedi in that it split the fandom down the middle. It's like the last Jedi in that it tore down He Man to build up the female characters, mm -hmm. which they could have been strong on their own, and you could have actually well, had He Man. Well, you see, they tried to fix that in the second half too. Yeah, there's definitely there's a concerted effort there's to try to, to to fix that in the second half, and I don't think that was the way it was intended. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that the uh, second half was delayed because of COVID, but it does seem like there was a huge tonal shift mm -hmm. in the second season. Like, they were trying to retroactively fix what they could, and they might have had a couple episodes left. But it did – again, you know, just look at Andra as being one example. Andra was, you know, built up to be a very important character, and she was all but sidelined except for the very end you know, in the second part. And that tells me that, that at some point in time, they changed direction. Right. And now she's like, suddenly like, she hates Adam. She's mad at him. And now they're, they're holding hands at the end of the, the show. She hates magic, but all of a sudden she can cast spells. I mean, well, she was always going to be able to, I, yeah. it was a little bit. She said, I did see they had her struggle. Like she was trying to send a message and she couldn't do it, but she could teleport people and things, you know, she, she was trying to use it, but it wasn't until she went into the water that she got her power. that She actually could, you know, use it, use it, which they kind of explained that in a way that made a little more sense than like Ray, but still, you know, she was always gonna be sorceress. That if you watched any of the original shows, read the comics, it, any of it, it she was, always is gonna be sorceress. One of the earliest episodes of the original filmation series talked about her, or like we knew pretty much right out of the gate that she was the daughter of the sorceress. Mm -hmm. um, Man at Arms was not her biological father, however, uh, 2002 he could have maybe possibly been, or his brother. It's complicated, kind of gross, <laughs> kind of gross, but yeah. So then we go from that to this little lovely thing from the Thrillist. Um, he has a PR guy. He's got to have Kevin a PR Smith guy. Kevin Smith hopes that Masters of the Universe Revelation Part 2 sticks the landing. Well, Skeletor tried to stick something. <laughs> and most people are like, what the hell? I just can picture, I can just picture Kevin Smith, old Kevin Smith, not new Kevin Smith. He doesn't even look like Kevin Smith. He looks like Kevin Smith's dad or uncle or something. But old Kevin Smith trying to be like, yeah, so then um, how does how does uh, Evil Lynn get the power there, Kevin? Oh, well, she tries to fuck Skeletor, but Skeletor is too powerful. So she says, tone it down, babe, and then we can fuck. And then she steals the sword. I'm like, what? Yeah. To Mattel. Like, you explain this to Mattel, the toy well, company. it's so metal. The toy company. Oh, yeah. Evil Lynn's going to trick Skeletor with the promise of booty. And that's how she's going to become Evil Lynn. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, goddess. And we're gonna we're gonna make all these sex jokes in this this toy based show. Well, we're gonna look we're gonna look at this now. So, so uh, and no, contrary to what the internet might have led you to believe, Shepard or Kevin Smith did not kill off your beloved muscle bound hero. Actually, uh, Kevin Smith bragged about killing him off and got to kill him off twice. And it was me who said, 
if you go back to the video, I don't think it's that he's Adam's dead. I think that they're just making you think he is, but he's not dead for the for the when the second killing came around. So technically, they did kill off the muscle bound hero. Kevin Smith likes to brag about it, but they brought him back. And if you listen to actual listen to the video thrillist, you'd know that we said that um, he's probably not dead. The 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 thing is though, it doesn't matter if they killed him or didn't kill him. The the problem they killed him in other ways. Yeah, the problem people had was that they sidelined He Man in favor of Tila and Evil Lynn. I mean, we only get proper He Man ten episodes. We only get proper He Man in the first and last episode. And what was it? No, no, there is no stepping aside of He Man. Well, there, technically, he doesn't step aside. He gets killed. But they, but they still was the same, the same basic idea. Yeah. It's not the He Man show; it's the Tila show. Yeah, it's, we it's right. semantics. It's semantics. Okay, and then and everybody <laughs> or, kept thinking or semen antics. <laughs> he tried that, but like the far as as Tila and Andra and Tila having a girlfriend, it was made pretty clear. Not the yes. other critics were all like, "Well, they're very much heavily indicating that they're together." Grace and then Randolph suddenly got changed. Grace Randolph said, "Yeah," she said, "Kevin Smith, you, you basically you lied." Uh, and then she watched one episode of part two and she won't even watch it. She's like, I'm not watching any more of this crap. Basically. Yeah. So you wait, miss the best parts, the funniest parts. <laughs> so here parts. we go. Why Revelation part one was hailed by critics earning a commendable 98% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, it did not get as very good for the audience. A fraction of the franchise's passionate fan base, base begged to differ. A fraction <laughs> of the of the passionate fan base. Which one's the one's first part here? Um, the 47 critics gave it a 94%. It wasn't 98, it's 94. And 39% of the, uh, was, was what the audience rated it as. Yeah. In that regard, it is very, very close to the last Jedi mm -hmm. with a, a 91% and a 42% mm -hmm. uh, audience score. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so, on. yeah, not, it was not 98%. If you're talking about part two, part two was 98%. Uh, but it is literally, part two is listed as 100% with seven ratings. Seven critical ratings. And 52% with the audience score. And it, it has come and gone. It's time has come and gone. Netflix is like, if, if it's not reviewed within the first week or two, it disappears. Well, look at this. There's only 394 user ratings here. Nobody's watching it. Uh, that's it. The one is. And if you go back to the other one, 6,940. Nobody cares. Okay? That's the problem. And it wasn't 98%. It was 94%. So they said uh, a fraction of the franchise's passionate fan, fan base begged to differ and unleashed a whirlwind of contrarian opinions, knee-jerk reactions, and venomous speculation about where the series would go. Clearly you're talking about us, Thrillist. Let's, let, let's, let's talk about this. And unfortunately, Smith took the brunt of toxicity. Let's, re let's re rewind and review, shall we, Thrillist? Okay? Um, the passionate fan base begged to differ and le the least contrarian opinions, knee-jerk reactions. They flat out said it was a continuation of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. They flat out said it was gonna be very metal and if you were fans of the original, it was gonna be made for the fans. They never said it was going to be the Tila show. Had they said we were going to make it about Tila, they did kind of allude to it. The one thing which we pulled, we pointed out. And PowerCon then disappeared. Right, right. While, we yeah. were the ones that pointed that out. And if they had just been upfront about it, people wouldn't have been so upset. But they did not be. They were not upfront about it, which to me, and I have said this before, is more misogynistic than anything because they they themselves didn't feel that being upfront with people would carry the show because they didn't have enough faith in their female character. To me, that's more misogynistic. Venomous speculation. All we put up Thrillist was that we heard from somebody who had the script that it was going to be the Tila show, which it was, that He-Man was going to step aside and Tila's going to have the power. She was going to be, like, it's going to be her thing, which it was, and that she might have a girlfriend with Andre, which everybody thought was the case. And they got reward, they got lauded for it in early reviews. All of which was true. And no one would have thought twice about it. But Kevin Smith came down on high to bully us. That was what it was about. Kevin Smith came down to bully us. Yeah, I tried to respond. He was he was doing that live stream. And he had turned the comments off. I was actually going to pop in and be like, I will, I will talk to you face to face. 
you know, if you want to come down from on high, we can we can have a discussion. Hell, you can come to Clownfish TV and we can have a mm-hmm. discussion. He tried to send the different uh, blogs after us to, you know, oh, yeah. that they were trying yep. causing trouble. Had a couple of them actually was a CBR or was it called? I think it was CBR. A screen Rant. Or no, Screen Rant. Screen, screen Rant, Rant came after us, yeah. Was screen Rant. One of them had put up that they heard the same thing, that it was going to be a female-led Tila show. And then they had to retract it because Kevin Smith had a, fist, had a hissy fit about that. Because we pointed out, like, well, here comes somebody else saying the same thing we've said. But that Venomous speculation. I think that's like this, what, what I, I guess like this venomous article. Because you're full of shit. Who is this person? You're thrill you're full of shit, Gil. Oh, did we have trouble with Gil before? I don't know. Gil's full of shit. Venomous speculation about the series would go. And by the way, the speculation was correct. It was hundred percent correct. I I got the uh, I got the nickel tour of it. I had the source explain it. They offered the script to me. I didn't take the script because I didn't want any legal problems. Um, but I, I know and trust our sources like this source in particular, I know works in the animation industry. And we kept saying the whole time, trust our source. Yeah. We trust you our know, source. When Kevin Smith, you know, tried to make an example of us, which, which just basically told everybody that we were right by him doing that. Mm. Um, we're like, okay, fine. He's saying that's not the case. We'll take him at his word and we let it go. But Smith and company would not let it go. And then the, 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 he took the brunt of toxicity. Bullshit. Thrillist. We took the brunt of toxicity from people like you. Oh, hell, we had all these these garbage YouTubers being like, look, Kevin Smith's telling the truth and Clownfish lied. And it turned out then then nothing. Nothing when it turned out that we were right. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing. Right. But months and months and months of that shit. Smith took the brunt of toxicity. Bullshit. And beyond that, I love this knee-jerk reaction. So, so, fellow fans, if you didn't like it because you didn't like the choices that Kevin Smith made, those were just knee-jerk reactions. Says Thrillist. So now Masters of the Universe Revelation Part 2, which consists of 6 through 10, 5 episodes, is here to complete the second half of Smith and Crew's overall vision. And guess what? Even as Part 2 trailers already indicated some time ago, He-Man is still alive and well, which we said before there was even trailers. Yeah. Cue the fan base's epic sigh of relief, which we said before there were trailers. I mean, and here's the thing, you'd be like, well, they're not talking about you. Yeah, they are. When they put this venomous speculation, they're talking about us. So, you know, fuck you, Thrillist. Anyway, (laughs) um, as expected, Revelation Part 2 is laced with nostalgia and loaded with winks and nods that will give eagle-eyed fans plenty to chew on. And yes, you'll get to see He-Man and Skeletor duke it out in perhaps one of the grandest Smackdowns ever. Uh, Yeah, they were the they were the B- Fight. We had two fights going on simultaneously, and clearly it was the teal and evil Lynn throwdown. Well, to be fair though, a sorceress though, if she was, a, if she was sorceress, sorceress is the most powerful. Yeah, but so, I mean that that makes sense. Yeah, but it was like uh, you know, there's a, a, a big tease. It was gonna be the the biggest, bestest fight. You know, He Man Skeletor, and He Man even says to Skeletor, "This isn't about us." Yes. As he chucks him. It's about the women. It's about but the to women. be fair, and I said this in the other thing, that Sorceress is the controller of power, Castle Grayskull. And which is why I don't want this, this this shitty version of Tila to get her, to get this power of Sorceress. And, you know, at that point, Evil Lynn had all the power. So that they would be the main battle going on. Where that the, makes sense. But where was Zodak? I know. Where I was Zodak? Anyway, so then they go side. They decide to to interview. They're going to interview uh, Kevin Smith. And here's I'm going to. You can go look at this. And if you want to read this, you can go ahead and go do so. But here we go. Masters of the Universe Revelation Part One was well received by critics, all forty seven of them. But there was also some toxic fandom in the mix. Are you hoping that Part Two wins back the naysayer fan base? Here, you know, newsflash, it didn't. Because, in a way, they were judging you by only seeing half your vision. Also want to point out, we were the ones that kept saying they shouldn't have split it in half. It did a huge disservice. That was us, too. Um, now, Kevin Smith doesn't throw people under the bus. Yeah, this is interesting. But you can read what he said. That was always the frustrating thing. A lot of people were dismissive, but at the root of it, yeah, I'm sure there were some people who were just jumping on a bandwagon. A political, political bandwagon. bandwagon. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, Not well, that Most fans weren't. Uh, no. But you had some cats who were legit like, this was my childhood, and you did sad things to all of them. Yeah, they freaking freaking finally give Clamp Champ an animated appearance. And not only do they fucking kill him, they snuff out his soul. Yes. So he's really, really dead. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Um, Black lives didn't matter. 
apparently <laughs> that black life did not matter. If you only watch the first five episodes is how it plays. Which, which we I, said. Yep. We thought people would go out on a cool cliffhanger with episode five and be like, oh, I can't wait until episode six. No, you look like you lost a bunch of your audience. But it did leave us in this position where we broke all the toys and they didn't know that they were fixed in the next five. So instead we had to take a lot of heat. So, no, it doesn't matter. The next five were actually worse. Uh, some cats literally thought we killed Orko. In retrospect, I, I wish all 10 had gone up because it would have negated all of that. I think, and I said, I said since the beginning, you said since the beginning, they should have done all 10 at yeah. once, that splitting it up was probably the wrong thing to do. Well, you couldn't tinker with the ending if you did that. Well, that's you? true. Mm -hmm. If that's what happened. I don't know. I'm not saying releasing all 10 would have made everyone love it. No, it wouldn't have. No, <laughs> I'm sure there would still be some people who are like, I don't like it, it ain't for me. That's some, most of the people. Some won't come back. Well, it looks to me like a lot did not come back based on the number of audience reviews and the number of critical reviews. When you got Grace Randolph, like, I'm not even going to waste my time with mm -hmm. any more of this. You know, you done fucked up. Maybe years down the road, someone will tell them, no, it sticks to the landing. The it best... doesn't stick to the landing. No, it doesn't. I'll, I'll, um, you know, I'll skip to the ending. It doesn't. The best you can hope for is that they give it a roll eventually. We did. Uh, they bring in Scareglow. They bring in Vicor. They bring in Hero. But no fucking Zodak. Mm -hmm. Literally, that he's is like, his only he's, job. He's like, you did all these cool things that had never been done before. For example, you brought in Scareglow, Vicor, Hero, and all these obscure characters. Yet you race bent Hero, who made up their anime debut. But some fans are hung up on the minuscule things like Tila's haircut. No, it wasn't about the haircut. The, the haircut is, is like a running meme at this point. I mean, that was a really bad choice of design. It was about the fact you ruined Tila. You really, you, the voice actress, I'm sorry, Buffy, you did a shitty job. The voice acting was terrible, and Tila was not Tila. They ruined Tila. Oh, he even makes the comparison to The Last Jedi. In the way that I sat by the sidelines and watched people react to The Last Jedi, I thought, man, people really take this stuff seriously. I suddenly found myself at the epicenter of something like that. It was heartbreaking for me because I honestly thought we're giving people the ultimate masters of the universe, so it was a bummer. Well, he thought that because he wasn't actually a damn fan. Yeah. That's just that you weren't a fan, dude. Like, you would have known, like, even people that reviewed The Last Jedi objectively, a lot of them, I would say, were not actual Star Wars fans are super, then they just look at like as, oh, it's a beautifully shot movie with some nice acting. Well, you know what I love? Where did Kevin Smith get his career from? What did he do again? Shit on Star Wars. Right. He's like, I watched you and I thought they take this stuff seriously. You Shit mean, on like, Batman. You took all this stuff seriously for Batman and Star Wars when it mattered to you for years? You, dude, mean, you mean like that? Dude owns a comic shop. I mean, come on. How, how could you not? I mean, this is what blows my mind. Kevin Smith, are you so out of touch? out there in California that, that you, you you have completely lost it. You, you should know. You should know that when you're playing with somebody else's toys, you're not allowed to break them and put them back in the box broken. Well, yeah, well, I love this. Well, you suppose he fixed them. He taped them at the end. He taped them up. Um, he taped them, put different body parts with different characters. That's how he got he people Sid in. He from, from, oh, God. It's, it's a He-Man's body with, with Tila's, well, it's not even Tila's head. Or not, I mean, uh, Evil Lynn's head. It's kind of like Tila's head because it's shaved, but it's supposed to be Evil Lynn. I don't know. But he's like, they take this stuff seriously. You mean like you took Batman and, and Star Wars seriously? I found myself the epicenter of something like this, and it was heartbreaking. Because I, 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 no, let me fix this. I honestly thought I was giving people the Masters of the Universe they'd want because um, it was my version of it. He and never it wasn't. Watched it. He admits multiple times he never watched it. It's easy to do this when you, you don't care about it. Okay. And we see a lot of people come in to just because the guy has, you know, quote unquote geek cred doesn't mean he's a, a fan of this specific property. So they go on about different characters he squeezed in and all this other shit that doesn't really matter. And they're talking about Evil Lynn and all this stuff. And it goes on and on and on. Um, most of the, the, the if, you, if you look at the ones who are doing the most uh, calling people names and stuff is the interviewer, not Kevin Smith. Yeah. Which I said to begin with. But um, they're talking about 2002. I don't think anybody watched 2002. It's the only time I've seen 2002 even mentioned because 2002 keeps getting glossed over and it was a much better show. Well, he's talking about Evil Lynn getting this amazing backstory finally. I'm like, did you watch 2002? Because she was as fleshed out, if not more fleshed out in 2002 than Tila was. Like Evil Lynn had a, a, a great backstory in 2002. Yeah, well, she, she never had the stage to herself. You did, But then you bring up 2002 a year. The next paragraph. You clearly didn't watch it, and her parents didn't try to uh, fucking eat her. I'm like, I still can't believe that was her story. Her parents tried to eat her. Her dad was insanely powerful. She had some issues or whatever. She was instrumental in the creation of Skeletor. 
And yeah, there were some, you know, romantic, more romantic overtones, I think, in 2002, but... Well, they said, yeah, they always kind of hint at romance between the two, but Squid King brought up something interesting. He mentioned that in the early episodes of the Revelation that Skeletor basically made a joke that, you know, he's an incel and that's yeah. why he's e evil and angry. Then Tila, or not Tila, I keep doing Evil Lynn's like, let's partake in our other favorite pastime. Well, that would imply that he's that all the time. But I thought he was an incel and that's why he's, he's mad and, he, and wants to burn everything down. I, Which is it? And that was our know. son who caught that in passing. So I don't know. It goes on about the horde, and they're trying to get themselves like, you know, they're trying to get themselves more seasons. I, I, <laughs> do not touch Shira. She's been fondled enough, and not in a good way. Oh, Amazon's gonna totally touch Just her. Just don't touch Shira. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're going on about this fantastic, you know, reaction to it. Literally seven reviews. Uh, from the it's critics, it's, that's just it. Seven reviews, all audience. There's 300 and some reviews. Um, Giant dumpster fire trying to be edgy. I Look, um, I don't foresee there being a second season. I could be completely wrong, but given the lack of give a shit from part one to part two, I don't see there being a second season. Mm -mm. And, unless Mattel is selling a a phenomenal Not amount of, I've seen. of shaved head Tila action figures. Our Walmart has a bunch of the figures and no one's buying them. They no. they bought the origins are all gone, but they don't they still have a bunch of the revelations. And and weirdly, I've heard from people in the know that Mattel is going to wind down the origins line and focus everything on the Masterverse line. Oh, yeah, I knew about that, yeah. Which has a lot of the... Now, I mean, look, the toys are actually pretty good. I, I'm not going to lie. They're they're pretty good. The character designs for a lot of these things were actually pretty good. The yeah. art was pretty good. All that stuff was good. We never said it wasn't. The story, however... <laughs> It was a well-polished turd. It was exactly what we were afraid of when we started hearing leaks. We're like, oh, God, this is going to be... <sighs> but but anyway, we're only bringing this up again because mostly because I wanted to tell Thrillist to fuck off. <laughs> and I'm not sorry, Mom. Uh, I'm just not. Because Thrillist is, uh, you know, for, you know they're, they're picking on poor Kevin Smith, the, the, the toxic trolls. I'm like, I'm not... I, I wouldn't say you're a toxic troll. All right. Yeah, he's doing the, the media rounds right now. I think it's too late. It's over. It was over with the reaction to part one. That's it. They really should have just done yeah. it all at once. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I mean, I don't think the reaction, I honestly don't think the reaction would have been much better, but it no. would have been a little better. Um, yeah. But it's over. I think it's over. And what we heard from people who talked to people on Netflix, that they just wanted Kevin Smith to shut up. So that we have heard from multiple people. Yes, they were trying very hard to get Kevin Smith to just shut the hell up. He has made it worse because he would not stop talking. Um, and actually what's going to happen, because we know the true to form with Kevin Smith, when things don't go well in about two years, once his NDA runs out, he's going to be on his podcast, Bad Mouth and his former former business partners oh, like he does with Disney with Disney and with Warner Brothers and yes there will be there will be Netflix stories I'm sure on his podcast mm -hmm. so just wait for that NDA to run out and you'll you'll get to hear them all I'm gonna wrap it up yep please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys we'll talk later bye